Hi guys, I wanted to do a little video to show just how easy it is to get a drum mix up and going using Smash and Grab for all my compression. And, um, you know, Smash and Grab is kind of designed specifically so that you can work really quickly and get really good results at the same time. For me, speed when I'm mixing is something that I really value. There's loads of situations I've been in, let's say I'm in the studio with a band and we've just finished tracking drums for a song and the rest of the guys you know, they want to get amped up on what we've done and at the same time they want to go and record their parts on top of really good sounding drums and it's been such a useful thing to be able to knock together a drum mix that everybody likes in you know a few minutes time as opposed to slaving over it for days and then you know even if you're just mixing after the fact especially if you've got the clients here with you you know you don't want to be going through your menu of plugins looking for you know, a specific compressor or just trying everything you've got. Uh, you'd much rather be able to get your drum mix sorted really quickly so you can move on to like the more creative aspects and getting the rest of the song together. I know in particular drums can take a long time. So the whole idea with Smash and Grab is that it's a super powerful dynamics processor, but there's just the right amount of options there for you to be able to move really quickly and get really good results. Let's dig in now. I've got a session up. Uh, this is a bit of Matt Halpern drumming. He's kind of freestyling it a little bit. Um, let's take a listen first to how it sounds with no compression. Now there is some EQ and gating going on on these live drums um, and as you can see the way I've got the session set up is I've got my individual close mics for each instrument routed to a bus. So for example you know I've got kick in and out going to the kick bus and then snare top and bottom going to a snare bus. All of the toms and there's five of them in this case there's loads of them um, going to the tom bus and then cymbals have hat and ride close mic and overheads all summed together and then finally we have rooms so yeah let's take a little listen now and then we'll go through a few different compression settings that i might use in smash and grab Cool, so you get the idea. These are well-recorded, well-played drums. Now let's dive in and start with the kick drum. I'm going to open up Smash and Grab here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to grab mode and also select kick on the drum type knob. Now, I'm using kick. I think it's fairly obvious why. Uh, the reason I'm using grab mode is because it's the, the mode that has the longer attack time. In other words, it's going to exaggerate the attack of the kick drum a lot more. And uh, that's what I want in this particular case. I want to get the kick drum so it's sounding really kind of squishy, and um, I don't know, just like it's got more impact, it's got that lovely wet character to it. I'm just going to solo off the, this kick bus, which, like I say, has a little bit of gating and EQ. There shouldn't be any compression happening just yet, uh, because I haven't yet pulled the threshold down enough. Let's just take a little listen. So next up, I'm going to pull down the threshold control until I'm getting quite a lot of gain reduction. We'll see what we get there. Cool, so that's taking on the character that I really like. Um, you'll notice I'm not using auto gain. I mean, that's just a personal preference. I don't know why. I generally, when I'm using compressors, I don't use the auto gain function. I just prefer to adjust the output myself. Uh, so I really like how that's sounding, but one thing is that we are starting to lose a little bit of the low end bloom of the kick, and that's just because of the way a compressor works. So there's a couple of tools that we have at our disposal here. We've got the beef control, which is a pre-compression low end boost. And the other thing we can do is actually blend back a little bit of the dry signal using this mix knob. Now that dry signal had more of that low end bloom. So if we can find a sweet spot where it still sounds compressed and has the character we like, but the low end is blooming in the way I like, we'll be golden. Let's just see how we go with that now. I'm going to start with the beef control. Cool, so let's now take a listen to the snare drum and I'm going to start by showing you what the close mics sound like with no compression added to them and then we'll get into smashing them off a bit. Right, now I love the sound of a hyper compressed snare close mic so that's what we're going to go for here. I'm going to leave smash and grab in grab mode which is like we mentioned with the kick going to exaggerate the attack the drum types already set to snare and i'm going to pull this threshold down significantly until we're getting a lot of gain reduction happening cool 
Cool, that's the kind of sound which I like from my snare. I love when it just has that ultra kind of cracky pop to the front end. Um, that is, however, a little bit pokey for my taste, and this is normal when you compress a snare that hard. So this is where the saturation knob can come into handy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically clip the transient down using the saturation knob set to tape mode. And this is going to be kind of subtle in isolation, but within the mix, you're going to make it a lot easier to level the snare drum without it kind of being this really ear piercing thing on top of the rest of the mix. That's sounding good to me. And then finally, I'm gonna use the air control, which is a post compression EQ up in the high end. And it's different on each of the drum types. And I really like how it's dialed in for snare drums. It's great for just giving you that slightly more hi-fi sheen to your snare sound. Great, so that snare is starting to sound really good. Uh, let's move on to toms, and I'm just gonna isolate rack tom one. Uh, there's a little fill that happens at the beginning of this excerpt, so I'm just gonna find that here. I'm gonna compress each drum individually here instead of doing it on the bus. The reason here being is I don't want like the tail of the floor tom to affect how the, the rack tom sounds because of the compression acting on all of them at the same time. So uh, I'm actually gonna use smash mode here on toms. The idea is I wanna round off a little bit of the attack and just get a more full sounding uh, tom sound. You know, you can really hear the note coming through. I'm gonna solo off rack one and start with no compression, then gradually bring in the threshold until um, I kind of hear that fattening up that I'm going for. That's sounding really good to me. It's getting that real kind of rock kind of sound to it. If you want to do something a bit more metal, you might want to experiment with grab mode and really bring out the stick attack. But seeing as these drums are being hit pretty hard, I don't really feel like I need more attack. I kind of want to take it the other way. I'm also going to put a little bit more air in as well using this, this control here, just to get a little bit more of the stick attack coming through EQ wise. Great, and that's the tom compression done. So I'm going to go and copy that across all of the, uh, all of the toms. So let's move on to compressing the overheads with the cymbal close mics. And what I'm trying to do here is get a more consistent sound out of the cymbals. You'll notice there's a few crash cymbals that stick out above others and different cymbals are gonna be at different volumes anyway. So I think that it's really useful to compress your overheads and I tend to do it quite aggressively. I'm gonna use smash mode. I'm gonna leave this in the overhead drum type as you might expect. And first of all, I'll show you what it sounds like with no compression then gradually bring in the compressor. Right, so that's sounding pretty trashed compression wise, which I kind of like the sound of, but it's a little bit extreme. So I'm gonna blend in a little bit of the dry signal now just to get a slightly more natural vibe back. And I'm gonna follow up with a little bit of extra air just to bring out some extra sheen on top of the cymbals. That sounds good to me, but I might even do a little bit of saturation just to bring out a little bit more vibe from the shells too. Cool, that's sounding really good to me. Let's move on to our room track. So for rooms, uh, like most people, I tend to smash them really hard with compression again. Uh, so we're gonna stay in smash mode. I'm gonna set this to room. Let's just take a listen with no compression, then I'm gonna feed in some, th some compression on the threshold control here. Sounding great, I love the sound of the room compression in Smash and Grab. I'm gonna pull back a little bit of the beef and add a little bit of air, because I don't need as much body from the shells here, and I want there to be a little bit more hi-fi sheen on the cymbals, so let's see where that goes. Oh, 
that's room compression sorted for me. And then, well, I guess let's take a listen to the mix as it sounds now. We've got compression on all of the close mics, the overheads in the room. Let's just see where we're at. Cool, I think that's sounding really good, but there's one more step, which is gonna be parallel compression. Now, I've always had a really specific way of using parallel compression. I always like to have that be this kind of separate bus of just completely smashed drums. And the idea is it's gonna sound horrible on its own. When you blend it in under the rest of the kit, it's gonna fill in all the spaces, just make the whole thing feel like it's a bit more of a kind of living, breathing thing. And the drum hits aren't kind of falling away as much in the spaces. You get the ambience kind of swelling up between the hits. Um, so I'm going to use uh, smash and grab, as you might expect. Uh, first, I'm going to show you what the parallel compression bus sounds like with no compression, because you'll notice I send a lot more of the snare than anything else. It's not just an even amount of everything. It's about 100, well, it's about double the amount of volume of snare coming through than anything else. So as you can hear, it's a really pokey kind of sounding snare there. Um, I'm going to pull down the threshold again until this is just getting murdered. I might even check out what extreme mode sounds like, just to take things a little bit further. That's kind of how I like it to sound. I want it to be that really thick, kind of just soupy drum sound. And you'll notice the snare disappeared like right back into the rest of the drums. And again, that's kind of what I'm going for here. Um, a little tip, you can push this too far. And if you pull the threshold down too far, you don't actually get any more kind of exaggerated compression behavior because the needle doesn't even have a chance to get back to zero again. Um, so, there's kind of this sweet spot where you're getting the maximum amount of movement of the compression. And beyond that, all you're doing is making it so that whenever the drums stop, you hear this big sucking back up to zero sound. So I try and find that sweet spot, which is kind of where I think we are with this particular drum mix. Uh, so next I'm going to bring this parallel compression in under the rest of the drum mix and hopefully you'll hear what it's doing. There you go, it's just this kind of excitement control, I guess you'd say. It makes everything sound a lot more vibrant. So there you go, those are my kind of starting point settings with Smash and Grab. This is something that you could knock together within like a couple of minutes once you've got your general EQs sorted on, on your whole kit. I really hope that's useful to you guys. I really hope that you enjoy using Smash and Grab and that you find it to be as useful a tool as I do. And thank you so much for supporting us again and we'll see you around soon.